Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Soph, known as Soph Soph here on FlossTube and over on Instagram. So I'm back. I was a little bit poorly, but I'm back and ready to go. I wanted to film a whip parade because I've never done one before, mainly because I haven't had enough whips to warrant a whip parade. Now, many of you will probably laugh because it's still quite a small number compared to most, but it's quite a big number for me. I've got a few sales going on, a few I'm behind on. So usually I'm very much, I'm on time with all my sales and everything's hunky-dory. <laughs> I am trying to go with the flow and pick up what I want to stitch when I want to stitch it, even if there's a deadline date. There's a few things I would like to catch up on and I'll discuss it while I go along. I feel like I'm waffling a little bit here, but I wanted to go through all of my whips, show you what I've done. And one of the reasons is because I, I can't find photos of where I was when I last stitched it. So I'm using this as a reference to show you what I'm stitching on and then onwards I can have fresh photos of where it was when I last showed you. And that is full disclosure because I haven't been that organized with stuff and yes, I'm trying to get back on track so it makes sense in my messy brain. So I wanna show you where I keep my whips, if I can pick it up. So this is my lovely wicker basket that sits in the floor of my office and it has all of my 11 whips in it. So it's not gonna be a huge video, so don't worry. Um, and in the front, I keep my little notepad and in this notepad, I'm just gonna show you it because it's absolutely beautiful. It's got loads of mush mushies and it's got some snails and just nature and I love it. I got this on Etsy. I can't remember the store, but I will link it below if you're interested. So it's just a plain notepad and I'll just show you how I organize it. So I write all my whips here. I just write all the details. Um, once it's completed, I highlight the the date it's completed in green and that's just when it was started in the pink there so it's a basic basic way of tracking my whips but it works for me i've tried digital i do a digital form as well but this just pen to paper works well with my brain so this is my oldest whip it's kept in this basic amazon whip bag i am slowly replacing all my whip bags with let's be honest turtle base stitches, uh, whip bags, and some others, but mainly turtle bag stitches, <laughs> turtle bag, turtle base stitches, because she makes such beautiful bags. So, this whip I started on the 13th of April, 2023. So this is my oldest whip. This is the Freddie Mercury slash Queen pattern from Unique Stitch Crafts. So this is the baby. This is where I am with it. So it's been, it was a little bit of a slog, but I've picked it up recently and just gone with the flow and I've actually quite enjoyed this one. Now, previously this was discontinued from the store, but I recently reached out to her because a few of you were saying if that was still in stock, I would stitch it. Guess what, it is now in stock. She stitched it, um, she stitched it, maybe she has. She has re-released it for anyone who would like to buy it. I know that, um, a couple of people I know have bought it already and if you fancy stitching it with me it might spur me on to stitch it more because I've put this down a, a month ago and I haven't picked it up again but I'm nearing a three page finish so this is just that will bring me up to three pages and then I'll just have oh no I'm lying because he goes down to here so I think this will be a three page finish and then we've got the fourth page and then a fully finish. So I would like to concentrate on this this year and get it done. I absolutely love it. Potentially next time if I was to stitch it again, which I'll reword that. If I was to go back and stitch it again with the knowledge I know now, I would have picked a really bright fabric and just done the Queen and Freddie Mercury himself and not done the, the like the block stitching around it, even though it's a fantastic finish. It's taken so long and I was so naive when I picked this up. I thought, yeah, I'll get that done in a couple of months. And then I started, you know, if it was my only whip, yes, I probably would have. Would have gone a bit mad, but um, yeah, he's taken a, a while. So the information about this one is he, he stitched on, 
He stitched on 18 count white Zweigart Ada and called for DMC. And that's it, I think. I'm using Mark Markup RXP for this one. So I could potentially tell you where I am with it. So let me have a look. 73%. So that's not bad. That makes me feel good. Maybe I can finish this one this year. So here he is. And this is what he'll look like when he's fully completed. And there's my little needle minder there. And it says true love. I can't remember. I think it was the stitching den I bought this for. And I believe they've closed down now. Um, I bought it in their closing down sale, but I absolutely love that because even though I shouldn't really eat dairy, I do because pizza is my true love. So that's my first whip. Let's put him back in the bag. My second oldest whip is Pink and Sun Landscapes. This was started on 21st of August, 2023. So this is where I am with it. I'm really enjoying this pattern. I just haven't picked it up in a long time. So this is what it'll look like when it's complete. So you can see there's a bit of a way for me to go with it. Now this was stitched with the called for, but in CXC, and it's stitched on 28 count white even weave. And I can't remember where I got the fabric from, sorry. And that's stitched two over two. So that one is another one that I'm aiming to stitch this year and finish but we'll see because I've got so many other plans. <laughs> um, this one is housed in this lovely bag and this is from Sister Susie Sews on Etsy. This is one of the first fancy whip bags I got and I love it. So I'll pop that one back in and before I do so I'll just show you this needle minder. This was from Jess Get Stitching. I bought that at Bristol Stitchy Day last year and it's one of my favourite um, needle minders if I'm honest. This one hasn't seen the light of day for a long while. This is my third oldest whip. And I feel a bit guilty that I haven't touched it because I do really enjoy stitching it. And it is on my stitching to do. I don't think I've touched this since February and it's one of my biggest ones. So it is something that I need to get on with. Otherwise it'll, it'll be like 20, 33 when it finishes. So this is Terry Redlin's Comfort of Home, Comforts of Home, and it's uh, Heaven and Earth Designs. This is what it'll look like completed. I'm going to show you that first. This is where I am with it. So I don't know if you can see, but it's just a hell of a lot of sky and branches. And then I've done this little bit here. So not very far, if I'm honest, but I will get on this. I'm promising myself I will do some more stitching. So this is, when did I start this one? I started this one on the 17th of September, 2023. As you can see, or oh, as I said earlier, sorry, there is a page finish on it. So it's stitched on Laguna Easy Count, 28 count. And it's stitched, apart from this corner, which I did full cross, um, one strand full cross which didn't go too well, it was just a bit tight. I'm stitching it 10 stitch, one, sorry, I'm stitching it two over one, 10 stitch, and I'm railroading as I go along. It's been a while since I've done it. So yeah, I'm using the Royal Rose method on that one. And it's making me wanna stitch on it. So I think that will be coming out in the near future. So my next whip, I haven't touched since Christmas and the reason being it is a Christmas stitch. I succumbed to the Lola Crow cross stitch creepy uh, village Christmas style. I think that's what it's called. Creepy Christmas village style. Yeah. So it's hashtag creepy Christmas village style. <laughs> and I stitched three of the, the motives motifs. I think there's three others but I haven't touched them. My plan is to stitch these in July for Jolly July and get that whip off my list and then they will be ready to hang on a Christmas tree if I decide to buy one this year. Um, so I'll just show you which ones I've stitched so far. So I've stitched this lovely little Christmas tree with the skulls. I loved stitching those crows. 
Then there is the, I, I half asked this one. It's not fully finished yet. As you can see, it's all bunched up at the back, but it is in the frame. It makes a good holding position. Um, so this is the creepy carolers. This was the first one that was released, which is super cute. And then the other one is the Haunted Mansion. And I love this. My cat has, I don't know if you can see, proper wonky eyes. But I think that makes him a bit more deformed and, and scary. So I like that. <laughs> um, so they are the three that I've stitched. I will be stitching the others. Hopefully I might finish that in July. It would be useful if I told you what I stitched that on. So it's 36 count linen in elephant run by fox and rabbit so that was the called for fabric and i'm stitching that with cxc threads started it i didn't actually start it at christmas i started it on the 3rd of november when the sale started and i know so many other people have finished it and they look incredible and they had them on their christmas tree for christmas 2023 not me though as you can see so hopefully 2024 they will be done and i might display them in some way so the next one I've picked up is, that'll be, how many have I done now? Four. This will be my fifth oldest. So this is my, sorry if you can hear, hear my stomach, it's rumbling, it's talking to me, saying go and eat, um, which I will after this. So this one is another huge undertaking. And I don't know why I started a heaven and earth and a long dog in one year, but I did do it. But this has been on, it's still on its nerge because I've been stitching on it up until this morning. I picked it up last Saturday and I haven't put it down. I'm actually really, really enjoying stitching this one. So first I'll show you the whip bag. So this is the lovely whip bag that was special to Be Stitchy Retreat in February 2024. Yeah, this year, February 2024. This was by um, Nicola, who who helps organise the retreats with Liz, Be Crafty Bags. And it's just super cute. It's got a little bee on here as well. And it's big enough to fit my nerd hoop as well and all the threads I needed. I've also got the Be Stitchy needle minder here. So this is where I am with it. I will put a poster, a poster? I will put a post here just to show you what it'll look like complete and you can see how little I've done in the grand scheme of things, but I am thoroughly enjoying this. So I'm nearly at a full page finish. So when I get down to here, it will be full page, but I am going back to do all the back stitching. So we've got a little acorn here. I think that'll turn into an ant and there's some other back stitching. So I'm going to do the back stitching as I go along, just so I can say it's like a fully finished page. There is a fox that starts here, which I'm going to stitch in red. And there's some other like motifs along the way that I will stitch in another colour, which I'll show you the colours in a moment and the plan that I, I want to do. So this is stitched on 40 count Newcastle Linen in Lagoon from Lakeside Needlecraft and I'm using DMC 3799 which is the main colour on it. I will tell you a little sad story. The frog visited on this one. So I stitched, I started stitching it in February and I think this is what I stitched on the Bee Stitchy Retreat religiously almost. I think I picked up something else but I was on a roll with this. I stitched all of this and all of this up to here, ignoring ignoring this bit here. And I realised when I finished stitching the deer, I was one stitch over. And most people just go, it's one stitch, fudge it. My brain wouldn't allow me to do that. So I had to unpick all of this up to there where I'd made the mistake. So I unpicked it last Saturday and then I started stitching on it straight away and I was like, I need to get further with this because my brain won't pick it up if I just abandon it in a, in its whip bag. So I'm so glad I persevered because it's absolutely, look, it's looking lush. I love it. So this is stitched one over, one over two um, DMC. The fox in the main picture is going to be stitched in this lovely paint box thread red. 
and then I've got some other paint box threads that I've talked about in a previous one and as I get to each one you'll probably see in my like progresses what colours I'm going to be stitching on there but this one is the next one I'm going to be used and I've never used paint box threads before she was so helpful at the Bee Stitchy retreat and we picked the colours together and yeah I can't wait to use this because I know that Sherry uh, just so Sherry is using it for her not uh, do not be a dunce I think that's what it's called pattern and she said they're really really lovely silks to use and I can't wait to use it so the fox starts at the end of this finish at the end of this page so the tail I believe starts here on the first page and then it goes down into the second so I think I'm going to stitch down that way and then stitch across just because I want to get that silk stitched in first. I'm not stitching this on marked up RXP because I had the paper pattern and I've scanned it all, put it into my PDF reader, so I'm doing it that way. I hear footsteps, I think I'm going to be given a cup of tea. Hello. Hello. You're going to say hello? Hello. Are you going to show your face? He's, he's going no. Oh, thank you. Hi moles. I think it's like an obligatory thing that he brings me a cup of tea. He's not like my servant or anything, he's just very nice. So where are we? I think we're halfway through. One, two, three, four, five, six. We've got six more to go, so uh, you gonna help, Moles? Six more cups of tea. Six more cups of tea to go, yes. Okay. Apparently I gotta be joking. This is one of my favorite mugs as well. I think I bought this in Urban Outfitters, like, when I was a teenager, many moons ago, and it just says, save the planet, drink more tea, make more love. <laughs> and putting it down on the floor, I bet you any money, Molly is gonna wanna stick her nose in there and drink my tea. We shall, we'll find out. <laughs> so the next one is housed in this lovely whip bag. So it's a little yellow whip bag with blue ladybirds, and then it's got like a purple inner. And this was from Be Crafty Bags as well. I won this in the raffle. This pattern is crazy. I absolutely love it. So this is the Welsh Folkies by River Drift. I never get this right. River Drift House Needleworks. So I met the lovely Emily. I'll tag her below. Um, I don't think she, she's only got an Instagram. So I'll tag her below. We met in the Be Stitchy Retreat and she's a fellow Welshie, lives not too far from me and we went to the Cardiff Stitchy Day not too long after and we decided, well she started this and I jumped on the bandwagon and said I need to start this as well. So we started it together and we're doing this under hashtag St David's Day start because we started it on the 1st of March which is St David's Day. This is what it'll look like when it's finished and some of you have probably seen their like Cornish Folkies. I think it's modelled around pole dark, but this one is just madness because it's like it's got so many different like pink, pink sheep and loads of different colours. So this is where I am with it. So I've stitched the man and I've I've done half of the pattern. I love it. I love the little castle and the chapel and the harp and the love spoons. They are just great. Apologies for the big crease all the way down the middle. So this is stitched on 32 count antique pink in even weave, uh, antique pink even weave by Sew It All. So it is a very subtle pink and you can only just see it when there's white on the background. Um, but I just thought because the rest of the pattern is pink, you know, there's a lot of pink in it. I just thought it would suit it really well. And it was in stash as well. So this is stitched, this is stitched with CXC. Oh no, I lie. This is stitched with DMC and I started this on the 1st of March 2024. So I need to get on it really and just stitch the lady and then finish all the motifs but I just haven't picked it up in a little while. I'm seeing Emily again on the Bristol Stitchy Day on the 15th of June so I might take this one and it's her birthday as well so I might sit there and stitch it with... I know I'm not stitching it with her because she's got a new start but yeah I might take that and stitch it just to get some more more stitches in. The next one I started on the 5th of March. It's housed in this lovely whip bag. I think this was the second whip bab, bab bag I ever bought and it's from Sister Susie Sews on Etsy again. And this is the wonderful The Wanderer Sal. 
the new Wanderer Cell. And I'm not very far along on this, if I'm honest. I need to catch up. I think I'm like two motifs behind and it'll be three on the 14th of this month. Um, so I need to get my butt into gear. So I've got the frame stitched up, which is absolutely beautiful. And then I've got this Amsterdam stitched up as well. So this is stitched on 16 count beige Ada and the hashtag is hashtag new wanderer cell. And I started this on the 5th of March, 2024. So I can't show you what it'll look like when it's completed just cause it is a cell. I could potentially show you what the new motifs will look like, but I will show you when I finally get my butt into gear and I stitch them. I absolutely loved the first one and I'm loving this as well. Just when I stitched the first Wanderer Cell, I had like four whips and it was so easy for me to keep up with the, the stitching and the day to be like, right, this day I start stitching this. And they do stitch up really quickly for me. I really enjoy black work as well. I think they take like an evening, maybe two evenings to complete. So I think I need to like break myself away from stitching on the long dog after I've done a page and catch up with this one because it is, it is so much fun to do. And it's Courtney on Creations is the designer and she's got so many incredible designs. I've even got another sal which I'll show you in a bit because she enables me with all her beautiful patterns. The next one started on the 1st of April 2024 so I started this with a bunch of ladies that I met at the Cardiff Stitchy Day. We will be meeting up soon I think to do some more stitching together and I think we'll be meeting in Pink Scissors which is the Turtle Bay Stitches shop in Bridgend so you can hire out the shop not the whole shop. You can hire out a table in the shop per day. Yeah, reach out to Sophie and she'll be able to tell you how much it is per day. I can't remember, it's in my messages somewhere because we are we haven't picked a date yet, but when we do, we'll pay her for it. So we'll know how much it is then. But yes, I'm really excited for that. We all get together again and get to stitch. There is a lovely pub next door as well, which deliver food. So I'm excited for that. Anyway, I'll show you what we started together. So this is A Good Companion by Emma Congdon. It's out of her Stitch for the Soul book, I believe. Yeah, Cross Stitch for the Soul. And it's not named, so I called it A Good Companion. This is what it'll look like when it's completed. This is where I am with it. Now I have done a conversion on this because I really didn't like, not that I really didn't like, it looks lovely with the purple, but I'm not a purple girl. I love pink. So I decided to change it to pink. Apologies for it being all scrumpled, as my niece would say. Not long on this one, really. I would like to get this finished. Maybe put some stitches in and get it finished when I meet up with them. So, yeah, that's that one. This is stitched on 14 count, Rustico Ada. It was in my stash. And I believe it is, yeah, it's stitched with CXC threads from the Talking Dog Stitcher. And what else? We call this the hashtag the shortest longest sell. So I believe there's a few other people that have joined. I know Lorna, I think it's Lorna from Canada, has uh, st is stitching it along with us. And she might actually stitch it with my conversion, the pink conversion. She said she'd see how she felt when she got to it. So if anyone else wants to join, please join. You're more than welcome to. You can use the hashtag. And if you want the conversion, just drop me a message and I'll, I'll send it over to you. The beautiful whip bag that it's housed in. So I got this fabric and I asked Sophie from Turtle Bay Stitches to stitch it up and it's just got some fox fixes <laughs> and some mushrooms and just little acorns and stuff. And then on this side, it's got this lovely gold. Um, that fabric was from Soap Shop. So she stuck that together for me. And there is a fox um, charm and I don't know where he's gone. There was a fox charm, I'll find him. We're on a roll, we are on a roll. The next one is another sal that I started recently. This is housed in another Turtle Bay Stitches bag. I just love these bags. They're like the perfect size to store everything in. And it's got this lovely thing. And then she's got her Turtle Bay Stitch. Oh no, she's got Bespoke here. And then she's got a little dinosaur here. So cute. 
So this one houses the next whip I'm going to show you. This is the Femurs and Fungi Sal and it's by Fine Frog Stitching. Yeah, Fine Frog Stitching, I remembered. So this was released as Borders and then each week I believe and then there was like one week break there's a motif that's released and they are nice small motifs. I really enjoyed stitching them but I am three behind <laughs> which is frustrating me. I could sit down this weekend and get them done to be honest. We shall see. So we have three already stitched. So I think the top cat skull was released first then this one at the bottom then this big one and then this little bowl of mushrooms. And I believe, is it? No, there might just be one. There's, no, there's two that's been released. So there's one here and there's one here that I need to stitch. There could be a third. I could be lying to you. So this is stitched on, well, first it was started on the 5th of April, 2024. And it's stitched on 32 count even weave um, by Sparklies and it's in like this lovely pink colour. I did want to go for the emerald that they released it on but I had this in stash, stash so it was a lot cheaper for me. Um, it's stitched with CXC threads from the Talking Dog Stitcher of course and yeah I think I said 32 count even weave. I've not bought from Sparklies directly which is where this fabric was from. Um, this was on a de-stash table and I yeah I bought it before I even knew about this sal, I think, or the sal had just been released and I thought that would be perfect and it's the perfect size as well. So I lucked out with that one. Um, so for that one, it's hashtag femurs and fungi sal. So if you don't want to stitch it, but you want to have a look at what everyone else is stitching and what theirs looks like, there's some lovely combinations with fabric and things. So yeah, it's my first fine frog stitching pattern and I love it. So we're coming to an end guys, we're coming to an end. Not too long. I'll show you another whip bag. Do you want to guess where it's from? You guessed it. Turtle Bay Stitches. So she's got a little tag on them now, which I think is adorable. So Turtle Bay Stitches tag. And then look at that pattern. I just think that's incredible. I'd love a jumpsuit in this fabric. It's so cute. And then it's got the skull and crossbones there. So as you guessed it, you probably saw a snippet of it then. This is my hashtag Manning May Sal. So I did one last year, absolutely loved it. Finished it not too long ago. I did Eclipse. You can have a look at my previous videos for that one. I spoke to my friend Amy, so make and create over, she's on FlossTube and she's over on Instagram, so I'll tag her below and she decided to stitch it with me. Amy dyed me a fantastic piece of 18 count Ada. It's like a dark brown color, like mottled. And I thought that would be so beautiful for the Halloween at Granny's, which I have started. So this is what it'll look like completed. And just on this fabric, it would have looked absolutely beautiful. And she dyed this for me and sent it. So the postman was so slow in delivering it to me. It wasn't Amy's fault. She said she delivered, she was on holiday. So she posted it from like a tiny little post office somewhere. So it took so long to get to me and I wanted to make a start on the 1st of first of May. So I did and I did it on some black Ada that I had in my stash. So I'm really disappointed because about six days later this arrived and it's the perfect piece of fabric for it. But I will put this to good use on another piece. Maybe if I stitch this one again, I'll use this. But I'm already, you know, flying with it. So I don't really want to restart it just yet. But thank you so much, Amy, for this. I love that you dyed it for me. Thank you. So this is where I am with it. So this is on 14 count Black Ada, like I said, from my stash. It's stitched with CXC, you guessed it, from Talking Dog Stitcher. And... I love this. I think Amy said it so well the other day. She's she's flying. I think she's got five more to stitch and she's done. She said that it's just the perfect amount of colour changes, but also like the same pattern to keep you interested. And it really is. Like you kind of get into a flow with doing each pattern, but the amount of colour changes just make it so, so good. 
go and check hers out and have a look at hashtag man in may sal as well because there's so many other people stitching so many other um patterns from carolyn manning and all of her stuff is beautiful so that is where i am um when did i start it oh i said i started it on the 1st of may this year last year I started the Eclipse one and I stitched it all year until about April I think I completed it so I'm just going to stitch on this as and when it's not going to be finish it within May I'm just going to stitch it when I feel like it but I'll want to stitch a new one next year when it comes to Manning May Sal. I feel like I've missed something out on that but I don't think I have oh yes I have I have this fabric look how it's been finished so at Sophie Store Pink Scissors in Bridge End, she hires out her overlocker for a very reasonable price, and you and it's all loaded. She's got it with like the multicolor threads, which go so well with this pattern, and you can sit there with a a pack of your like a pile of your whips or your fabric, and you can just overlock, and it's a very reasonable price. I've got. As you can see, all these whips, some of them don't have this beautiful finishing on it. So I've got pile. I think when I go for that stitchy day, I'm going to hire the overlocker for about an hour in the morning and just get loads of it done. Because since this has been overlocked, nothing else compares. Like, I even came home and looked at how much it would be to buy an overlocker and it just wasn't reasonable compared to what I could pay Soph to sit there, chat for with her for an hour and just get stuff overlocked. So... If you're in the area or you fancy making the trip, it's well worth it. Number 11, Forest Fairy Tale Sal. Didn't want to start another Sal. Quarter Neon Creations just decided to bring out this beautiful Sal and I just thought I have to start it. Love being in the forest. I love fairy tales. So, yeah, this is where we are. Again, can't show you what it looked like when it's finished because it is a sal. I will say that I'm behind on this one as well. So I've stitched the frame. The first release has come out and it is Red Riding Hood. And yeah, I'll show you. So firstly, I'll show you the bag. This is another Turtle Bay Stitches bag. And it is the reverse, not the reverse, but it's like the same fabric as the, fo the fox I showed you earlier with the mushrooms, but it's in pink. And then we picked this lovely like brown bubble fabric to go with it. And this one has the fox on. Look how cute that fox is. I will find the fox for the other one. So there's a few options you can do with this sal. I've decided to go monochrome, but I think I'll add some red in just for Red Riding Hood, just because Red Riding Hood can't have a green hood, really, can she? Well, she could. It could be my Red Riding Hood. We'll see. See what I decide to do. It'd be like Piglet when he was in green. I loved Piglet when he used to wear green. And then he turned into like, and then he started wearing pink, which was really strange to me. Anyway, segue, completely went off on a tangent there. So this is the Forest Fairy Tale style by Quarter Neon Creations. Started it on the 8th of May, 2024. So this is the border. Man, the counting on this drove me crazy. Just, I had to make sure that I counted it correctly and I really hope I have. But yeah, see, I, I need to see so I need to get this overlocked ASAP. It's driving me mad. <laughs> so this is, see the little leaf there? So I'll bring it up closer. There is like some mushrooms and a little mouse. Oh my God, he's so cute. And I'll bring him to the other side. And then this is a little bird and some mushies and then the rest of the border. So I think, yeah, this up here, Red Riding Hood is released like this top corner. So that'll be so fun to stitch. I will get stitching on that soon, but I absolutely love, 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 love forest theme. And I've got, I don't know if you can see, there's a little mouse here on top of some pumpkins. And then I've got my fox and I've got a badger and then mushies a spider web, some fox gloves, and there's an owl on the back of my shoulder. So this sal reminds me of my little sleeve. 
I'm still I'm in an area in whether to colour that sleeve in. It's not 100% done. It's a good job I know a tattoo artist and she's my friend and we can just say like whenever I fancy colouring it in, I can. Another segue. <sighs> I'll stop chatting and I'll tell you about this this whip. So DMC 935 is the colour I chose on this fabric, which is the 32 count Olive Murano's Weigart. And I believe I got this from Patchwork Rabbit. I believe it was Patchwork Rabbit. I'm really sorry if it's not. I'll pop it down below as to where I got it from. But yeah, if you fancy joining in on that sale, head over to Quarter Neon Creations. It is under hashtag forest fairy tale sale. So go check it out. There's loads of people who are way ahead of me. They've already stitched Red Riding Hood so you can see what the first release was like. But I think that's it. We're done. My whip parade is over. I'm kind of glad I've got that out in the ether now because I don't think I've done one previously. I've just been showing you as and when. So the next video I will be coming back with will probably just be the normal format. If there's anything you'd like to see from me, let me know. I can stop waffling on to you now and you can have a lovely day, evening, night, wherever you may be, whatever time it may be. Happy stitching and I will speak to you all soon. Take care. Bye.